saying that because I'm a cop. I'm saying that because that's a logical, common sense thinking process that I have. Police are Yeah, it's hard to imagine what you'd even do if you had a minor traffic incident. Uh, Who's going to come to mediate if you have two vehicles that collide and and somebody needs to make a determination of fault? Or if you you hear a knock on your door in the middle of the night and uh, the windows start to rattle, who who do you call? Mm -hmm. Is a neighborhood watch going to be able to adequately respond to those types of, of situations or all I would say is the second amendment right would be the most reasonable thing. like robberies or uh, hostage situations. I, I can't even imagine a society in which there isn't a trained, courageous, uh, brave force to respond to those things. Um, but maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just thinking too, no, too small. I don't know. Not, what what do not, you think? You're not, you're absolutely not. I mean, think about it. Think about that. A country with no structure. You're, I mean, we're fussing about white cops killing black people. Just imagine not having police at all. And you're right. Think about that minor traffic stop. Think about all those people that are so materialistic. If somebody taps the back of their car, I promise you, if there's not a police to solve the problem, that person that hit that person's car will probably die. And who's going to be there to clean it up? Oh wait, you don't have police. Yeah. So in my like personal my me. personal opinion is we're looking at if have you ever seen the movie Purge? You ever uh heard? no, I think my daughter read the book. I think it might be a book. Okay. The movie, the concept is you got twenty four hours to go and kill whoever you want to kill. That's the whole concept right, right. of the movie. If yeah. we defund police, welcome to the end of America. As yeah. we say it. Yeah, hard to believe people are talking about it, but they are. Let's transition now to the last set of questions, um, Brandon. I want to talk a little bit about the rioting that has taken place in seems like almost every major city around the world. Um, give us some of your thoughts on generally what you've seen in the last few days. We've seen unrest. We've seen destruction. We've seen burning of both buildings cars and even of churches. Uh, we've seen a massive amount of looting, stealing, fist fights, people being run over with vehicles. Uh, I saw an art museum uh, with the art stolen. I've seen at least one video of um, brutality to animals. It, it's, it's just a little bit, uh, it's just kind of shocking. What do you make of all this, Brandon, as, as one who is both black and a police officer and a Christian uh, tie it up for us. What are you seeing? What do we What do we need to do about all this? <laughs> From a Christian standpoint, pray and trust in God's word. And instead of being part of the problem, be the solution to the problem. And that means every Christian brother and sister out there, I don't care if you're Catholic, Pentecostal, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, it doesn't matter. Every Christian out there needs to get their butts on their knees and start praying in unity that God would intervene and cause this chaos to stop. We need the divine power of God right now. Okay, that's from the Christian standpoint. From a, a black man standpoint. Oh, where do I even start? I understand that our community is ticked off that Mr. Floyd died by the hands of a white cop. I get it. It's ugly. It's messy. It's disgusting. It's despicable. I get it. All right. However, we're better than that. And I'm talking to the black community. We are better than that. We have been through so much. Okay. In this country, from slavery, from segregation till now, we've been through a lot. I get it. But come on, people. I have yet to see a black person step up and write some kind of bill to send to the senators of our country to put in place to possibly help stop the the killings of black people by white cops or people by cops in general. All right, we, we get so caught up in this racism, the isms are bad, like I said before, we get caught up in the isms and we lose sight of what we are. First, we're human. There is nothing different between you and I, Matt, we're all the same color. We're just different shades of brown. Okay. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I'm so sick and tired of the race issue being an issue when it's really not an issue. The issue is our moral sin taking over. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. We're letting Satan get the best well, of us. Yeah. Let me ask you this last question here, and then we'll wrap up um, on a on a positive note. Brandon, uh, thank you so much for your your honesty throughout this interview. This last question is pretty personal, though. Do you feel safe? Um, do you feel safe as a black man living in America? Do you feel safe as a police officer in an age of unrest? Do you feel safe as a Christian in a time of uh, swiftly changing, very polarizing ideology? Do you feel safe? <laughs> Oh, goodness. I got 13 guns. I wish somebody would. (laughs) All right. That was a horrible, a horrible comment. Um, Yes, I feel safe. And I'm going to share something that most of you guys don't know. I, too, was once arrested. Okay. granted, it was a minor traffic uh, infraction. Um, I paid a ticket, but it never got processed. So I got arrested. But I did Mm -hmm. not disrespect the cop. I did not give the cop a hard time. And by the grace of God, I'm not on drugs that will alter my state of mind. Okay. So I don't feel safe is an understatement. Okay. Because I don't go out Mm -hmm. causing problems. I don't go out looking for trouble. Yes. I can walk out of my door and somebody can shoot me dead. It happens. Life happens. I get it. And it could be for, it could be for a hateful reason or a racial reason. Who knows? You know, But the one thing is we're all going to die and it's just when God says we're going to die. That's just as simple as that. We have to come to that Mm -hmm. conclusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't mind, Matt, I would like to give a little bit more of my personal opinion of the Black Lives Matter movement. All right. I am not, I am not for the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't support it. I understand its concept, but I don't support its actions. And the reason why I say that is you say black lives matter, but yet we had a black officer, retired police captain that was murdered, but black lives matter hasn't even mentioned that. Okay. You say black lives matter, but you don't talk about the fact that the government and and yes, I'm blaming the government for this basically tore apart the black family home structure where the father is not welcome in the home, if you will, anymore. We're not educating our black people to stay in committed relationships and keep the fathers around. Instead, we're doing the opposite. If black lives mattered so much, then we would be talking about black on black crime, like black on black killings, blacks murdering blacks. You don't see any outrage from the black lives matter movement on this issue. You don't see them stepping up and saying abortion is wrong because abortion basically goes after black young black women so often that black babies are aborted all over this country and all over the world. Mm. Now, listen, abortion happens in all ethnic um, ethnic groups. I get it. But I'm speaking about black lives matter here. If that movement was so about black lives mattering, then they would speak out and say, look, abortion is wrong. How can we help you support this child? You know, I understand you, you can't afford to have a family. Then you need to be teaching these women to be abstinent and not have promiscuous sex to quote unquote, make this mistake of having a child. The child should not suffer for the parent's mistake. Bottom line. If a black life mattered so much, then we would start educating our black children at a young age to respect police officers, respect authority, get an education, um, cultivate their education and become successful people. All right. Yes, slavery was horrible. Yes, segregation was horrible. But people marched, people fought so that we can be integrated with white people, Asian people, basically all of humanity, if you will. Okay, so there's not nothing that Matthew Everhart can do that Brandon Queen can't do. You have a doctorate mm-hmm. degree, I can get a doctorate degree. Nothing mm-hmm. stopping me. Okay, so I'm not going to blindly support a movement. And, and I want you to think about this, this ideology for a second, Matt. So the sole purpose of Black Lives Matter is the brutality of police officers to civilians. Oh, wait, I said that wrong. I'm sorry. Black people being killed by white cops. Does that mm-hmm. not sound like a racial category to you? Think about it. 
they're saying Black Lives Matter. And maybe they got the name of their movement wrong. Okay. Because I see it as all lives matter. And no, I'm not suppressing the black voice. I'm not suppressing black lives. All lives matter. Okay. And in an instance that God created us all equal. Abraham Lincoln even said it. He used God's word to prove it and won and abolished slavery. Dr. King comes along, along with the civil rights uh, leaders and did the same thing. They used God's word to disprove the sin that was hovering over this country. So if it worked in those two time frames, how come it can't work now? So I don't like movements that literally specialize in keeping racism going. All right. If black lives matter, then we need to look as a movement. We need to look at all the things that threaten black lives. And that's single parent homes. That's no structure in the home. That's black on black crime. That's gangs, drugs, promiscuous sex. All those things threaten the black life. So we need to be preserving the black life, if you will. Not pointing out a group of white cops that kill black people. That's that's racist. That's that you're being racist at that point. OK, so do I feel safe? Yes, I do feel safe, Matt. I feel safe. I don't I don't have to walk out of my house looking over my shoulder, wondering if a white cop is going to shoot me in the back. Why? Because I am a citizen that upholds the law and also follows the law. That's why. I have nothing to worry about. And if I die, so be it. How does Paul say it? To live is Christ, to die is gain? I don't know. <laughs> You know, I feel safe. I, I, I'm trusting in God's word. If I die, I get to be with him. If I don't, I get to live in his chaos and still proclaim his word. So on a positive note, brother, I do feel safe. Well, Brandon, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Uh, again, just want to review a couple of show notes here that if you're interested in subscribing to The Ear, that's the Evangelical and Reformed podcast, Brandon Queen, the podcast king, is the regular regular host. They've had a number of seasons in which Brandon has done all sorts of interviews on authors, pastors, theologians, uh, cultural um, discussion. It's a wonderful podcast. You can get that wherever podcasts can be found, all the good ones at least. Uh, if you're watching this as a YouTube uh, show on my channel, Pastor Matthew Everhart is my name. Thank you so much for watching. You can feel free to like and subscribe. Of course, you don't have to, but if you want to, that would be great. Thank you so much for checking in, everybody. We do love you lots, and we'll talk to you later. Awesome. Well, real quick, guys, before y'all run off the show here, um, I'm taking back over the podcast real quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, since, you know, since this is an uneasy and uncertain time dealing with the pandemic and what just happened with the uh the death of uh, George Floyd. I, I do want to take this time to pray. I mean, there's a lot of hatred going around. There's a lot of racism that's being cultivated. Uh, there's a lot of things that are happening that should not be happening. Guys, we are made to love one another. So what I want to do is I want to take the next minute or two. And Matt, please join in with me is that I want to pray for this country and this world right now, uh, as it is that, you know, God would give uh, black people, glimpse of hope and, and and look i'm asking that god will call out a strong black person to step up and say look what's going on is wrong but this is how we should handle it we we need the black community needs that right now um not mm -hmm. somebody that's going to come in and keep the racism going um the white community needs glimpses of hope too and, and look i will give white people this and i can't believe i'm saying white people um white people are wanting to understand what's going on and certain black people won't let them. All right. <laughs> You're asking for justice to be served. You're asking for, for people to understand black people, but you got people doing it and, and it's not being allowed. Okay. So we keep asking to have this conversation about race in this country, but nobody's ready. And I just want to pray that God would see us through this and that we would come together in unity as a country united in God's word. So I just want to take mm -hmm. that moment just to pray for a little bit, if you don't mind, Matt. Yes, sir. Go for it. I'll, I'll open this up and you close this. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for my good friend, Matt, who happens to be a white man, Lord. But I don't see his color as a threat to me. 